using slow motion in Final Cut Pro 10. How's it going guys? This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. I wanna talk for a second about slow motion video and Final Cut Pro 10. Now, of course, we all know slow motion video can be done with our iPhones. Uh, there are cameras you can go out and buy that do a good job at slow motion video. But what if you're in a situation where you shot a video, you didn't shoot it in slow motion, but you wanna slow it down in post? Well, with Final Cut Pro 10, that is very possible. Uh, there are actually three ways you can go about slowing down video in Final Cut Pro 10. There's normal mode, there is something called optical flow, and there's frame blending. So these are three tools within Final Cut Pro 10 that Apple gives us to be able to produce slow motion video. Now let me just preface this by saying if you know going into your shoot that there is a particular part of the video that you want to be in slow motion, it's best to go ahead and shoot that video in slow motion or in high frame rate mode. Because when you have more frames, there's more information there. So when you stretch it out and slow it down, it's less choppy. Uh, there are more frames, hence less choppiness. Now if you try to slow down and stretch out a video shot in 24 frames per second, obviously it's gonna be more choppy than if you stretch out a video shot at 60 frames per second. So let's try to illustrate this. So I have two clips in this Final Cut Pro 10 project on the timeline currently. One clip is shot at 24 frames per second. The other clip is shot at 60 frames per second. Watch what happens when I slow down the clip shot at 24 frames per second. So if I go to the retiming menu and I select slow, you're gonna get three options, 50, 25, and 10. The lower the number, the slower it is. We're gonna choose 50% here just to be reasonable. And I'm gonna play this back. You can see it slow down to 50%. I'm gonna play this back now and watch how choppy it is. You see that? It's just not very smooth. And the reason why that is, is because there's less information because there's less frames in that slow down clip. Now, if I do the same thing with this clip over here, which is shot at 60 frames per second, you're gonna notice it's much smoother because there's more information, there's more frames to work with as I slow it down. So I'm gonna go back to slow it down and slow it down 50%. Watch how much smoother it is when I play it back after it finishes rendering, all right? See how much smoother it is? That is because there's more information or more frames to work with. More frames stretched out over a period of time is gonna result in a smoother playback experience. So compare that with this right here, no question, it's better to shoot at a higher frame rate if you wanna slow down. If you know going into the video that you want to slow it down a certain section, you should probably just go ahead and shoot that video in slow motion. Thankfully, there are cameras that exist that do a very good job of this. The uh, Panasonic GH5 is one of those. There's also the iPhone. Yes, the iPhone does an excellent job of slow motion video. In fact, it shoots 240 frames per second in full HD. You also get 4K at 60 frames per second. So perfect camera for slow motion. Now, I realize that not everyone wants to shoot with their iPhone because of its limitations. So a, a camera like the Panasonic GH5 is an excellent tool for slow motion video. But what if you didn't shoot at a high frame rate? Is all hope lost? Well, not necessarily. Final Cut Pro 10 includes a couple of tools to help you out. Under the retiming menu, navigate down to video quality and you'll see two additional video quality settings, frame blending and optical flow. So what exactly is frame blending? Well, here's what Apple says. Frame blending adds in between frames by blending individual pixels of neighboring frames so that slow motion clips will play back more smoothly. Pretty simple, right? So after we select frame blending and let it render out, you're gonna notice a slight change in the way the video looks. So let's play it back. So it is a little bit smoother, but mm, still not exactly right. It just doesn't look right. You can tell there's some sort of weird effect going on right there. The bottom line is that these video quality effects are not automatic cure-alls. They do work in some situations, but not in every situation. 
But what about optical flow? Well, optical flow is a little more complicated. It actually uses an algorithm, an optical flow algorithm, to determine the direction of movement of the pixels. And then it draws portions of the new frames based on optical flow analysis. So optical flow is a little more GPU intensive. In fact, in Final Cut Pro 10.4, it uses Metal 2 as well. That means the performance in the latest version of Final Cut Pro 10 for optical flow is gonna be better than in the past. So let's play back the clip with optical flow applied and see the difference here. Now, what you're gonna notice is that it definitely does not work. Uh, the motion is too fast and too complicated for optical flow to create a convincing slow motion effect. So you definitely would not wanna use optical flow in that particular situation. But that doesn't always mean that you would choose frame blending over optical flow or disregard either one. It really just depends on the situation. So you have to kind of play around and experiment. Now, obviously, if you have a lot of fast motion, it's gonna be more complex and harder to pull off. But if you have something like this, this clip right here is pretty basic. All I'm doing is moving from the foreground back towards the background. And you can see even without an effect applied, it doesn't look terrible with normal slow motion enabled. But if I go down and select optical flow, you're gonna notice it's much smoother. Watch what happens here after it finishes rendering. All right, so we are done rendering. Let's go ahead and play back and notice how smooth that is. That is optical flow at its best, folks. You can see how much smoother it is, and I find that optical flow works very well for basic movements, basic tripod moves, for instance. If you're performing some tripod moves, it, is, it works very well for that. Now let's switch over to frame blending, and you're gonna see it does okay, but it isn't as good as optical flow. Watch what happens. So you can kind of see a little jitter See that? It just isn't smooth. It's very apparent that the frame blending is taking place, whereas optical flow was much smoother. So here are a couple of takeaways. If you know going into the shoot that you want certain portions of your video to be in slow motion, then shoot at a high frame rate. But even if you forget to do that, all hope is not lost. You can use some of the tools that Apple has baked into Final Cut Pro 10, like frame blending and optical flow. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.